Now remember now, we're talking about living from the inside out, working together with God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to start there. Praise God. Look at verse 16. Man, calm down, Pastor Stevenson. 2 Corinthians 5, look at verse 16. Wherefore, hence, wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yet though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more in terms of human flesh. Therefore, if any man, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, what? All things are become new. Let me read that again. Verse 17 again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is. He is. That's got to become a revelation. I need for you to hear this tonight, not from old ears or old hearing, but I need for you to hear this tonight as God himself is talking to you. I, I, I need for you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying tonight. He's going to use the word of God, but he's going to speak to you tonight because there is an understanding that God wants us to get. There is a mindset he wants us to take on irregardless of what's going on in this, in this present world. Man, we are kings and priests in this present world. Are you with me here? And we will no longer submit to what's going on in this world. But notice, notice what he said. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creation altogether. Old things are passed away. What old things? How you used to do things. How you used to live. How you used to handle things. How things used to be. What, you, what was once taking place in your life, those are old things. He said old things have been passed away in your life. He said, and behold, all things have become new. Shout, I got a, I got a new start. That's how he want us, to begin, want us to think. He want us to think that you got a whole new start. Your slate being clean. Everything about you been clean. Picture yourself right now. If you was to move to, right now to a whole nother country altogether, Everything about you uh, uh, from North Carolina perspective has been wiped away. When you move to Germany, you move to Germany or wherever, man, you got a whole new pretty much identity. So you can start a whole new life all over again. Are you with me? And that's what he's saying. By being in Christ, there is a whole new life that you can start all over again. It's been made available for you to start all over again. But watch this here. Look at verse 18. And all things are what? Say it again. All things are of what? One more time. One more time. The new life that he's giving you, he's telling you up front, all these things are of me. So you increasing is of me. The joy of the Lord is of me. A peaceful life is of me. The joy of the Lord is of me. A health and healing, divine health is of me. A prosperous life is of me. A good life is of me. A healthy life is of me. The abundant life is of me. The old is passed away. How you used to live, how you used to conduct yourself, how things used to be. He said, that don't pertain to you anymore. And all things are of God. Oh, you got to catch that. Well, I don't think that's of God. Wait a minute. You increasing and growing and thriving and being everything God called you to be. You saying you don't think that's of God. Watch this. You're not working together with him. Because now his intention for you can't be everything he, it can be because he gave you, he gave us his word for us to work together with him through the access of the word. It's the word of God that gives us access to work together with God. And when we don't work with, when we don't work with the word of God, we don't work with God. We can't work with God. 
All things are of God. Shout, all things are of God. You in Christ now. You're a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. All things are of God. Watch this. Who hath reconciled us to himself. How? By Jesus Christ. See, I can't forget that. That's why I got to fall in love with Jesus. I can learn principles, but I don't, if I don't know his presence. Oh, let me see. I can learn principles, but if I don't know his presence, you can walk out principles absent from the presence. And no matter how much of principles you do, if you don't add his presence along with the principles, you're going to still end up lacking. A motivational speaker, man, can give you all the kind of motivational teachings all day long because he got the principles. But at the end of the day, he still may go home alone, drunk, lonely, and don't have no kind of fulfillment because he got the principles, but he don't have the presence. What God wants us to understand is you can have the principles. That's why I just don't teach principles. I want you to know him. I want you to have a relationship with him because when you know him, then it adds to the principles. That irregardless on where you are in your present state, if you got him with you in your one bedroom apartment right now, it may not be where you want to be right now, but because you got the presence, you work, you work in the principles. In other words, you understand you ain't going to be there all day. But right now, because I got the presence with me, I can rejoice right now. See, because if I don't have the presence with me, I'll get angry working principles. And I wonder why things are not happening and I get discouraged, distracted, agitated because I'm working principles outside of the presence. But when I add the presence in along with the principle, then it makes the journey a whole lot easier. And that's what God wants us to do. He don't want us just to get caught up in principles, get caught up with the crowd, get caught up doing what everybody else is doing, caught up going where everybody else is acting, acting like everybody else. Okay, you're doing all that and you left his presence. He said in his presence is fullness of joy. Are you with him? Learning new things, but you're not in his presence. Are you with me here? Watch this here. Reconcile us to himself. To wit, that God was in Christ doing what? Reconciling the world unto him. God was where? God was where? God was where? Hold your place, hold, 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 hold your place right there. God was in Christ. Watch this here. Boy, I got my teaching hat on tonight, Jack. Look at Mark 6. God was in Christ. God was in Christ, reconciling the world. Look at Mark chapter 6. Remember, God was in Christ. He was in Christ. Look at Mark 6. Because we're talking about working together with God. Watch this here. Mark 6, look at verse 1. And he went out from thence, came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even mighty works are done by his hands? Why? God was in Christ. So when they were hearing Jesus' wisdom, they was hearing God's wisdom. When they were seeing him work through his hands, it was God working through his hands. Okay, but here we go. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Wait a minute, God is in Christ. But they looking at the flesh of Mary's boy. God was in Christ, working through him. They recognized what they seen, but they look, they looking at the flesh. And now they are equating 
what they can receive or not receive because they're looking at flesh. God was in Christ the whole time. But now they looking at Joseph and Mary's boy according to the flesh. And now that has a bearing on what they're going to receive from him or not. Limitations has now just stepped in. They was in the presence of an unlimited God. But they became limited because they was looking at something from the wrong perspective. When you start looking at things from the wrong perspective, it'll bring you down to a place of limitation. Your vision will become limited. What you believe it for will become limited. The things that you believe God for now is, is now becoming limited. And it ain't even the devil. It's your perspective. It's your own sight. It's your own sight. Watch this. Talking to you. Glory to God. Are you with me here? Watch this here. Watch this. Praise God. And Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor but in his own country, among his own kin, in his own house. And he could, what? There, what? God in Christ. So God couldn't do all what God wanted to do. And it wasn't God's fault he couldn't do what he wanted to do. God was in Christ. Watch this here. And there he could do no mighty work, save laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages doing what? Teaching. Okay, in other words, okay, the, the, the only way I'm going to be able to get these people out of this situation, I got to keep teaching, Jesus said. I got, I got to teach, I got to get their minds renewed, I got, to, I got to teach them, I got to educate them, I got to give them a whole, I, I got to keep teaching them because as long as they keep looking at me from this perspective, then I, you know, I can't do much. So let's break it down a little bit further. So what, what was the root to all of that? A lack of knowledge. Because when you lack knowledge and understanding, you will judge things from the wrong perspective. And I don't care how much you think you can know or how much you think you can understand. The proof of your understanding would be through the things that you do or don't do. Are you with me? So he said, I realize I got to do some more teaching. Because they still was looking at the flesh. See, anytime you're not changing, teaching still got to be done. And it might be the same thing over and over again. Because you may think you're ready for something bigger or greater. But the reality of you ready for something bigger and greater is you will already be doing things for bigger and better and greater. Your understanding will already be there. The revelation will already be there. Your giving will be on another level. Your love will be on another level. Your action will be on another level. Your forgiveness will be on another level. How you act and respond and do things will be on another level. That's when you can say you're ready for a deeper revelation. It's when you have already tapped out where you already are. Because if, you, if your giving is still the same, you need more teaching. If your love is still the same, you need more teaching. If you still acting and responding to things the same way, you need more teaching. Because the proof of you reaching another level is you would do more than what you're doing. Because you understand what the more that you're doing, what it's going to bring you into. Are you with me here? Watch this here. Ain't that interesting? 
See, because all this is the, is the deception. Now, this is important because these are things the enemy subconsciously is, is trying to show people. And, and, but how's all of this doing? Let, 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 let's find out what's happening because we live from the inside out. We live from the inside out. Everything about us is either built and strengthened from the inside, and what's on the inside is going to show up on the outside. But let's, let, let's discover where it's at, because we're talking about working together with God. Look, look, go back, jump back over to Mark right quick. Mark 5, good, Mark 5, jump over there right quick, and let's look at something here. My God, I'm doing this. Look at Mark 5, look at verse 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he came, he fell at his feet, besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, lieth at the point of death, I pray thee come, lay thy hands on her, watch this, what did he say? That she may what? Be healed and she, what did he say again? What did he say? I pray thee come, lay your hands on her. Listen to Jairus saying, come, I need for you to come and lay your hands on her, watch this, that she may be healed and she shall live. Watch this, that was his faith talking. Because he had that much confidence and faith in Jesus. But now we know time went on, the woman with the issue of blood came and, and all those. So let me just jump on down because I got to move on. Look at verse 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. While he yet spoke, there came, there came, watch this, from the ruler of the synagogue's house. Time has took place. He's, when he first approached Jesus, he said, come, Lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. That's, that's what he said. Now here this woman come and all oh, this with a woman that's your blood. Think, time that went on, things has happened. But then while they now going, because I'm sure it seems like it's taken a long time. It seems like they ain't going to never get to the house. Interruption has came. And even though he made this confession at one point, but now interruptions came. But here is the kicker. But this is the point where I want to bring you to right here. There came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, which certain which saved. What did he say? Trouble, why trouble thou the master any further? So in the process of him waiting to see something, watch this here, another voice came. Another voice came. This is where we are today. Other voices come. While you're waiting to see something. And if you don't know how to attack that voice. That voice will put another image in you. Change the image that you have. Change your perspective about things. Another voice has the potential to even change our relationship. Another voice has the potential to come and interrupt the role that you're on. Another voice, while you're waiting. Because we're talking about living from the inside out. Living from the inside out. Yeah, watch this now, watch this. This is vital. Watch this here. When that voice came, why trouble is thou the master any further? A question. Questioning, questioning, but he already spoke. See, where, where I want you to get to tonight is whether or not somebody want to question you or not, you still spoke. 
And don't you move from your place of what you've already said. Don't you move from your place of conviction and confidence. And, and even though questions may try to come and try to question who you are and what you have and uh, who, your ability. No, uh, uh, no, no, uh -uh. no, I ain't moving. I know what he said. God has given me his word. So I ain't moving from his word. He said I'm the head and not the tail. That's what I'm going to keep saying. Well, if you the head and not the tail, then why are you still? If you no, well, you know what? That's you. Watch this here. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. As soon as Jesus did what? Heard the word that was spoken. See, that's where you got to get to. You got there are some things you got to stop listening to because it's painting and putting another image in you. Because we live from the inside out. And you can say all day long what people say don't bother me. Because we live from the inside out. You may not know it, but those words that got planted in you. And for you know, it could be five months, six months later, there is another image that's been created in you. You don't even know where that image came from. It came from a word that you never stopped listening to. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, immediately he attacked that thing. Because he knew the potential of that word. He knew that, okay, Jairus, one minute you talking like this, but if you keep listening to that, it's going to change how you speak. And many people, perspectives about ministry, the, the walk of God has changed by another voice. Because somebody don't believe like you believe. And you listen to a voice that calls you not to hold on to a truth. All things are of God. You know what God told you. You know what God showed you. You know what God has done in your life. You've seen his hand. You've seen the breakthrough. You've seen the things that God has already done. So how can you let another voice who has seen what you've seen cause you to pull away from the God who you already seen? And it just could be, well, it don't even take all that. God, it don't even take all that. Wait a minute. It took all that for you several years ago. How did that change? It took all that then. That's the mindset you had then. And you see, it took all that when things was happening, when God opened up the doors, when favor was there, when increase was coming, things was happening for you. And it was things that you were doing. But another voice came. And caused another image. Because we live from the inside out. I'm attacking this thing. Because I realize that you can look the same, talk the same, but if you got a different image in you, it's producing different things in your life. And you can't figure out where it's coming from. You wonder why you're warring and fighting and you can't figure out what's happening. Those things don't seem like the same. I, it just seems like things is different. Why? Another image been put in you. There's a word that was spoken that you didn't check. Watch this here. And it calls another image. Watch this here. Oh man, this is good. Watch this here. Watch this here. As soon as he heard, the word. Watch this. This is what he said. And he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. No, you, in other words, he tells him, you keep believing. Don't you stop believing. Don't you let fear get in now. I know she may even be dead. But don't you, no, you said, Jairus, that if I come and lay my hands on her, she will be healed and she will live. 
Jairus, that's what you said. And because I honor your word and because I'm going to honor you, I'm a man that I should not lie. Neither am the son of man that I should repent. If I said it, I will do it. If I spoke it, I will make it good. I don't care how the carcass may look. It may be a dead body, but you said Jairus, that if I come in that house and lay my hands on her, she gonna live. Now I need for you, Jairus, to stay with what you said. Woo! Hallelujah. Man, how far somebody work with them? Stay with what you said. Man, you stay with what you said. Know some things may not have showed up. Know some things may not have not manifested yet. But no, we working together with God. And we ain't moving from what God is saying. Are you with me here? Trying to give another image. Trying to put another image in you. Go to Numbers 13 right quick. Let's see this right quick. And I'm, oh man. Numbers 13, we're going to see, we got to see this here. And I know these are things, scriptures you don't heard before. That's why I'm telling you, do not ever get caught up with that. Numbers 13. Praise God. There's an image. You got to, because we live from the inside out. Ask you to hold your place that go to Matthew 12. Taking you on the journey. Matthew chapter 12. Look at verse 34 right quick. I got to put this image in me. I got to keep this image. And see, that's the fight. That's your fight right there. It's to maintaining the image that you already have. Because those voices come to rob you of the image. Things come. Pictures come to rob you of an image. And see, the enemy is a master at sending pictures to disrupt that image. And he do everything he can to try to disrupt that image to, to, to put another image on top of the image you already have. See, there is an image that you've already created in you, and that image is about to bring forth. But if he can get another image in you, that's why your warfare increases sometimes. That's why things increase sometimes. And man, things start happening out of the blue. Say, man, this is crazy. Now, where did this come from? Now, now what? Now what? Now what's going on there? Now, now, now how that happened? Now what? Now, now what's this about? And, and all these things to try to create another image in you. Because we live from the inside. I'm going to have a conference and I'm going to teach this at a conference right here in this church because there are people right now who, who, who I'm talking about all over the world and they're wondering why and they yet have not discovered that the image they hold is the things you're going to keep giving birth to. And I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. See, it's not about how much you can quote. It's about how much you live. And how much you live, that's what's working in you. That's why you can walk, that's why it talks to you. When you want, might want to go this way, you say, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh. Well, <laughs> pull you right back. That thing is working in you. Watch this here. Matthew chapter 12. Living from the inside out. So we got to make sure, we got to make sure, saints of God, we're working on the image. I just can't let any kind of image be in me. And no matter what, I, I got to work on that. I got to work on my mind. I can't keep letting my mind paint pictures on how things are. Because your mind's so quick to paint pictures of the negative. I mean, it will show you all day the negative. I mean, it want to keep negative images before you. It want to keep things before you. Always look at negative. Always this right here. Look at this right here. All this right here. Voices that's negative. Emotions that's negative. Thoughts that's negative. All these things is designed to put that negative image in you. And for you know it, all you'll be doing is talking negative, thinking negative. Responding negative, and you wonder, well, man, it's like I just because all what I've been exposed to is negativity, and that negativity is trying to blank, it's trying to, it's trying to overwhelm my thought process because it's trying to put that negative image in me, and out of the out of my heart, that's what's going to come back out of me. It's negativity that I allowed to get in me. 
Look at Matthew chapter 12 right quick. See, this is the war, folks. This is the fight. This is the fight that every last one of us is in. Everybody, I'm talking about from the pulpit to the back door. In every church in America, in the world, or whoever exists, is maintaining the image that you have or, or what you want to give birth to. In Matthew chapter 12, look at verse 33 right quick. Either make the tree good. Notice, either make it good. That means I got to put some effort on this thing. What's trying not to be good, I got to make it good. So that means it's, I, I, mean, I, I got to make it good when I, when I don't even see good. When I don't feel the good. Because that's, the, I mean, even, because that's where it's really at. The feeling realm. When that feeling get fed, that feeling going to always want to eat. And once the feelings are fed and wants to eat, that's all want to be catered to. So it'll get to the point that you'll even know what the word of God says. I don't care what the word of God says. I just feel like this. And, and, and y'all may be looking at me like, what? Y yes. I've even heard people, I know what the word of God said, but that feeling them took over. To the point now, it's, it's overriding, well, even what the word of God said. And you can't work together with God. Watch this here. Look at Matthew 12. Either make the tree good. Say, I got to make this thing good. I got to make this thing good. I got to make my day good. I got to make my day good. I got to make my time with God good. I even got to make my experience of even coming to the house of God good. I got to make it good. I got to go home and make it good. I got to go to work and make it good. I, wh whatever I'm doing, I have to make it good. Because if you're looking for something to be made good for you, you'll be disappointed. Because what if it ain't good today? Well, what if it's good today but ain't good next week? What would that do? It will create another image. It'll create an image in you that you can't trust it. And it'd be hard for you to believe in anything that you can't trust. Watch this here. Either make the tree good, watch this, and the fruit good. Or else, do what? Make the tree corrupt and its fruit going to be corrupt. For the tree is what? Known by his fruit. Oh, generation of vipers. How can you, being evil, talking about from the end, within, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? Whatever your heart or spirit get filled with, that's what's going to come out your mouth and that's what's going to set the course to your life. Whatever my heart is filled with, notice, things have to get filled. It's filled now, but it had to Get feel. At one, I mean, it could be down here. So somebody have to feel it. Somebody have to feel your heart. I can only do so much. But if you don't feel your own spirit, if you don't feel your own spirit. It'll work what you get here and among each other, but you're not going to see real manifestation until I fill my own heart with the word I'm going to see. And this is something I don't do in church. This is something I do every day. Because it's what I do every day 
that's going to determine what I experience in my life. It's what I do every day. It's the confession I have every day. See, I mean, I mean, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. That's just like when, when we come to the house of God, sometimes I'd be expecting like, wow, because, man, I'd be thinking, man, I'm excited, man. And, you know, I, and I, I know, you know, people excited. And then sometimes it don't seem like people excited. I'm like, okay. I mean, man. But I understand. This is what I feed myself with. I feed myself with regardless on the negativity. And see, I have to constantly fight. The, the warfare of my mind, the images that come in my mind that try to make me think it ain't working. I have to constantly fight against it. I have to constantly resist and reject those words of, 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 of this right here and that right there. And then when people go off and lie and say things, speak against me, you know, I have to reject that. Are you with me here? criticism, things be said, I got to reject that. I can't listen to it. I just can't listen to it. I can't listen just to anything and anybody because I understand what, I, what I'm building in my own spirit. And it's not that I think I'm better than somebody. And it's not that I think I'm more than somebody. But I can only listen to something that's going to construct what I'm already building. There are good preachers out here. Don't get me wrong. Good preachers. I love them, respect them all, but I can't listen to them. Because it's not adding to what I'm building. And see, you got to know that. You got to understand that. That there are many voices, but is it adding to what's already been built in you? And that's the reason why there's a lot of confusion in the body of Christ right now. And people really don't know what to believe. And because they're hearing a lot of voices and never settled on the voice that's going to build them. See, you got to have one voice that's going to build you and get you to where you need to be. And when you get that one set up and established in that one voice, you'll be able to decipher what's real, what's not real, what's for you, what's not for you. Watch this here. A good man out the good heart. I got to go. A good man. Out of the good treasure, good deposit of his heart, do what? Bring forth what? So where do good things come from? Where do good things come from? Where does a good life come from? Where does a good family come from? Where does a good church come from? Where does a good things come from? Where do it come from? So it don't come from the outside. It come from within. What I want to see on my outside, I got to put it on the inside if I want to see it. Glory to God. Oh, man, I got this thing, y'all. Oh, man, I understand now. It's a fight. Because we're living in some times now where things are constantly being pumped at you on the television, everywhere you turn, on the job, everywhere you go, negativity. As soon as you turn the TV on, here it is. As soon as you turn the radio on, there it goes. I mean, as soon as you go to work, there, there they go. I mean, I mean <laughs> there they go. As soon, soon as you walk in there, they stand there waiting on you. <laughs> Watch this here. So, so, so there's a battle. So that's why you got to know how to build within you to be able to confront all this that you're constantly seeing. Because if you don't have within you what it takes to confront the evil that you are confronted with, It'll suck you in to do what they're doing. It'll suck you in to act like them. It'll suck you in to begin to talk like them. It'll suck you in to begin to think like them. Watch this here. A good man out of good treasure bring forth. An evil man out of evil bring forth. Jesus said, but I say unto you. Jesus said, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they what? 
shall give an account their work. Oh, you're going to see the results of those words. I've got to get that. You've got to understand this, folks. Nothing just happened. You will see the results of your words, positive or negative. If you don't hear nothing else tonight, hear this, which I know you're hearing because I know you receive it. But hear this. I, I, I got to get you to grab this. Jesus just told us something here that I, I, I really want us to really pay close attention to. He said, every idol, watch this, non-productive word that you speak. He said, you will give an account of it on the day of judgment. Now, he's not talking about judgment day when we stand before him. He's talking about the day when those non-productive words show up in your life. Now you're looking at those words face to face. Now, judgment is there. When you keep saying what you don't like and what you hate and what you discipline, all this. When that day come up, when other things show up. That's the judgment. Right there. Because it's been, you've been speaking it. That's why Jesus said non-operative, non-productive words. Words, watch this, that he didn't say. Words that he can't work with. He said, oh, you're going to see it. Because you keep talking like that, I can't work with you like that. I can't work. As long as you keep speaking like that, Talking like that, speaking against this, talking against that, criticizing this, I mean, down, downplay, saying this against that, talking against that. Those are non-operative, non-productive words. And he said, you're going to give an account of that? You're going to have to visit that. that that's going to show up. Praise God. Watch this here. Oh, man. For by thy words... Thou shalt be justified. By thy words, thou shalt be what? Condemned. Listen to what the Amplified said here in, in verse uh, 30, 36 and 37. Watch this here. Let me just back up. Now let's back up. Verse 34 of the Amplified. You offspring of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil or wicked? For out of the fullness, see, in other words, what I fill my heart with, out of the fullness or the overflow, the superabundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man from his inner good treasure flings forth good things from his inner treasure. An evil man out of his inner evil storehouses. Notice where he said both good and evil was at. Where did he say both good and evil was at? Watch this. It ain't even in the land. It's in the hearts. And because it's in the hearts, that's how it gets in the land. If it get in the land from the heart, guess what else can get in the land from the heart? Whatever you want. Whatever you want can also be in the land if we fill our heart with it. That's why we have to watch what's been said. That's why I just can't come into an agreement with anybody. That's why I just can't, oh, okay, you don't like this, you offended with that, you don't want, okay, but you know what? I, I, uh, because, no, I understand that if I come into an agreement with that, I'm allowing that to get in my heart. Now, I'm going to bring forth that in my own life just like it's in your life. So I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to act like I'm, no, 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 no. I understand how this thing works. And, and this is what I'm trying to show you, that you got to come to a place, you know how this thing works. You know, no, I can't be in agreement with you about that. See, irregardless, man, life changing is so blessed. Woo! Man, we are so blessed.
We are anointed. God has got his hand on us from the very beginning, even up to this present time. The goodness of God is flowing through this place. The glory of the Lord, favor of God is upon us. Man, God is constantly increasing us. I mean, God is doing great things through us. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this here. Even with a statement like that, when did it change for you? Think about that for a minute. When did it change? When did the speech change? The speech changes when you listen to voices that puts another in it. I can tell quickly when you're around other people without you saying a word because the connection changes. Without anybody saying anything, I can tell. I can tell when you're spending time with other people. I can tell. I can even tell when you're hanging around people that don't like me. And you ain't said nothing. But your spirit changes. Think about it. Why? We live from the inside out. Watch this here. Go to Numbers 13 for my time. See, this is important. Numbers 13. This is very important. I've seen good people let words move them. I've seen good people let words put, get a, another image get painted in them. And you know what's interesting? How people say he don't act the same. He ain't the same. But you know what's interesting? I'm here every week. Saying the same thing to you. Year in, year out. You got access to me 24 hours a day. How can I find you? So literally, who changed? I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I, I, I got to make this, 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 this state, these statements so you can really grasp what I'm talking about because we're talking about living from the inside out. And, and what I want you all to, really, to see is no matter what you might think could be hidden, ain't nothing hidden that is going to be manifested because we live from the inside out. And it's so vitally important that we understand that because you're going to go in the direction of your most dominant thought. When you can be building a whole nother image in you to make your life a whole lot better and greater. Because look, I'm, I'm your coach. I'm your guy. I'm your pastor, man. I spend my life to help you. Everything I do, I do it so you can have a better life. I dig and pray and meditate and get in this thing to feed you with the knowledge and wisdom that you can get so you can take the seed of the word and create an image in your heart to have a better life. Are you with me here? But notice that we then as workers together with God. If we can't work together, it's going to be hard for God to work with us because God has a system and God have not changed from his system. God have not changed from his system. Look at Numbers 13 right quick. Boy, this is so good. God ain't changed from his system. Look at Numbers 13. Watch this. Look at verse 25. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and the wilderness of Paran and to Kadesh. And they did what? Brought back what? What did they bring back? Word unto them and to all the congregation and did what? Show them what? Wait a minute, they brought back word, but then they also had some fruit. And they told him and said, we came unto the land where thou sent us, and surely it do, it do what? Floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. This is such an amazing story, because here they are, they back from the actual 
land that they was told exists. They back. And now they right here in it. They back. And they got proof. The evidence that it exists. Believe it or not, every last one of you got fruit to prove what you believe God for exists. Every last one of you, think about it. There is, I mean, I mean, man, some of you have gotten increases, man, that people just blow people's mind. Some of you are, man, some of you are living on levels that people in your bloodline never live. Some of you are experiencing things in your life that nobody in your family has ever experienced it. That's the fruit that the land exists. Watch this here. And this is the fruit of it. Look at verse 28. Nevertheless, uh oh, uh oh. They got the fruit. They got the fruit. They'd been there. They ate there. They seen there. They, they walked there. They got the fruit. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, what? The what? Boy, I'm going to close with this, man. Y'all buckle your seatbelt. Nevertheless, what? Nevertheless, what? Nevertheless, what? This is what God showed me here, Minister Leggett. No person has no bearing on what you can accomplish. So why would you look at any person who have no bearing on what you can accomplish? And he said, this is what he told me. He said, this is where my people are at. They, and that's what this was earlier about. The whole song and everything. He said, my people has forgotten who I am in their life. They have forgotten what I've already done. They're looking at people. And they're letting people define or be the deciding factor of their commitment to him. They're letting people define it. People. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. So what? And the cities are walled and very great. So what? He told you the land was yours. But they got an image. The image out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. They got an image. That's why they said, nevertheless. In other words, there was a journey all the way back. Watch this now. There was a journey back from the land to where they're at now. So this proves to you the conversations they was having on the way back. The conversations they was having on the way back counsel out everything they experienced. So now when they get back to the congregation, they now ain't even filled with excitement about what they just seen and what they just ate because they gave so much attention to the giants. And the giants, watch this, didn't even say a word to them. But they thought about something that wasn't even thinking about them. They gave attention to something that wasn't even giving them no attention. Their focus was on things that wasn't even focusing on them. And that's where we are today. That's causing many of God's people not to experience all what God has for them because you're mad about stuff that ain't even thinking about you. You're upset about things that ain't even really concerned about you. You got your eyes and mind on stuff that don't even have no pertain to you at all. And it's not affecting it, it's affecting you. It's affecting the image in you. Now you can't give birth to what you need to give birth to because you got distracted by the things all around you. Watch this, that was planted there just to do that. I am, boy, because I'm laughing at the devil. I'm laughing at the devil, man. He lost. 
Watch this here. We saw the children of Anak there. Let me go. Look at verse 29. Watch this here. The Amalekites dwell in the land, the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites. The Am- boy, they letting it, they letting it, boy, they letting it go in. Yeah, I see the Amorite. Did you see them? You see Jeb- you, you see them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They around there. Did you see all that? Yeah, I seen them too. You see all the Jebusites? Yeah, I seen them too. Well, in the mountain, the Canaanite, they, dwell, no, they were by the sea, the coast of Georgia. Yeah, they were down there by the ocean now. Wait a minute. You look at that stuff all the way down at the ocean? Stuff around the mountains? You, so, you focus that stuff down by the sea? That goes to show you when you're distracted, you're looking at a whole bunch of stuff, stuff everywhere, things and it's done took you all off focus. It don't have nothing to do with your journey. Watch this here. Watch this here. Well, they letting it roll too. The Amalites, the Jebusai, High Tide. Yeah, the Amalites. Yeah, we've seen them too. Look at verse 30. Watch this here. And Caleb steal the people. Y'all be quiet. So evidently they were loud. They was loud. Distraction noises is always loud. That's why you got to know and recognize loud voices may not be the voice you need to listen to. Because if you're my friend and I love you, I'm going to support you. And do whatever I can. But if I got to be loud and try to influence my way on you, to try to get you to do what I do and get you to think like I think, then wait a minute, something is wrong with that. Excuse me. Something is wrong with that. Because if we need to meet, we will. But you shouldn't be loud as far as trying to influence and impose on, on what I do. Just because you don't like it. Have any of you ever heard me stand up and keep preach on, teach on any other pastor, talk about what they teach on, preach on? That's not my concern. That's not my job to do that. There are some that will. Well, oh, that preach over there, he preaching there. That church over there, they're doing this right here. I ain't gonna, gonna preach I mean, if that's what you want to do, I mean, because it's been done to me numerous times. I ain't going to do that. Because you're here, to, you're here to hear from the Lord through me. You here, you didn't come here for me to talk about another church, another preacher, another pastor, another thing. No, you here because there are things you need and you need to hear from God. There are things that you need to get changed in your life. And as your man of God, as your leader, as your pastor, it's my responsibility to go in the presence of God, hear from God for you so that I can help you ravel or walk through or navigate through some storms of life and get some answers that you need. And me or you, either one, we ain't got time for a whole lot of noises. Because I need to hear something. You need to hear something. So when we come together, God can talk to us both together and he can do things in both of our lives that bring all of us to where we need to be. Are you with me? Well, I got to go. Watch this. Caleb stood the people for Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. Watch this here. Watch this. Watch this. Here we go. God, I got to go. Time was up. Look at this. But the men that went up with him, but the men that went up with him, 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 the men that was with him, the men that was with him, they was two different people. They had two different thoughts, two different thinking, two ways of doing things. Mo, I mean, I mean, Caleb and Joshua spoke, but then they spoke. Two different people. They was together, but had two different voices. Watch this here. But the men that went up with them said, we be not able to go against the people, for they're stronger than we. How did they get to that point? 
How did they get to that point when the instructions was go search out the land to see if the land exists or not? How did they get from searching of the land to we be not able to go against the people? A whole different scene now. You know why? The image they had. The image they had. Now here they are talking about something that had no bearings on the promises of God to them. And now God can't work with them. Because they now have a different image than what he initially was trying to get them to do. See, the only thing he wanted them to do was go and see the land so that you would know that this land I told you about exists. That's the only thing he needed for them to do. Watch this, though. How were they going to be able to get strong about that? They had to get an image of the land. That's why he told them, I need for you to go see it. So there are some things you need to see so you can get an image of it. Watch this as we close. Watch this here. That's why there are some things you need to see so you can get an image. But the enemy will pervert it and cause what you see to be from the negative when God trying to get you to see something totally different. But if I have the wrong mindset, I begin to see and look at things the way God, uh, different from what God want me to look at them. Are you with me yet? There are some things you got to see. You got to look at to know it's possible for you. I'm going to say this and, 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 and there again, it is what it is. Everything that is in my life is for you to see it. But watch this. But, but watch this here. Watch this here. The wrong mindset would see it from the negative and not for what was intended for you to see through. But why would they see it for the negative? Because another voice planted another image. I had to sort of that. You got to see something in order for you to believe for it. How can you believe for something that you can't even see? God will always bring things in front of you so you can see it. But until we renew our minds, until we think differently and, and, and get out of certain mentalities, uh, what you mean, sir? I, I, I'm finna deal with some stuff right quick. I'm finna deal with some stuff. Somebody comparing. Somebody, oh, he think he all oh, this right here, that right there. Oh, I don't. I, all that negative stuff just because somebody has something in their life, you, you want to talk down on it. Well, every time you talk down on it, you don't realize, you disqualifying yourself from receiving anything. Because now what you've done is you got the image that you can't receive that. So don't talk about how blessed you are when you're cursing somebody else's success. When you're speaking evil about somebody else's success. Don't talk about how blessed you are. You're blessed in the city. No, you ain't. Because you're only going to go but so far. Because your word's going to come back like a boomerang and hit you right there back smack in the face. Because you can't go no further than what you can see. And if you can't see and acknowledge something in somebody else's life, how can somebody see and acknowledge something in your life? God always puts you in a position for people to see. I had to learn this, Wanda. I had to learn this. I didn't want this. For years, I tried to reject it. And God began to show me how I was in error because I didn't want nobody to think I was trying to act like this. He said, no, I put things in your life so people can see see so they can see my goodness see my glory but a wrong mindset will criticize it but 
she got to come to a place. But oh, let me go. Let me close. Watch this here. But the people are stronger than me. Watch this. Let me close here. And they brought up a what? Evil report of the land, which they searched until the, they brought up an evil report of the land. Brought up an evil report of the land. They searched until the children of Israel, saying, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants of the earth. And all the people that we saw, don't, don't, don't what they're focusing on. The people. All their focus is, is on the people. If all your focus would ever be on people, you would never see God. Or see the glory of God. One thing we're going to have to do in this time that we're in now is get our eyes off people. What they're doing or what they're not doing should not be our concern. What are you doing? You need to fill yourself up with where you're heading. <laughs> That's it. What do you feel? Do your part. Man, I settled that thing. I settled it. I had to settle it as a pastor. Whether people come, go, leave, whatever. I'm doing my part. I have no control over people in what they do. I have no control. So I can't start controlling myself or getting out of control because of other people. Because if I fill my eyes with what people are doing, what they're not doing, it'll start controlling me. It'll even control how I preach to you. And watch this. You don't deserve a less than message because of somebody else. So why should I deserve a less than respect because of somebody else? Watch this here. And they brought up a report of the land which said, the land saying, the land through which we search it is a land that even happened to it. And all the people we saw in it, a great statue. Watch this here. Have no barons on it. And there we saw the giants. The sun, see, they still talk about the sons of Annie. We, we, we come out of giant. Yeah, you see them? Yeah, we saw them, man. And we were, watch this. Here we go. As we close. We were work in our own sight. As grasshoppers. Watch this. Here's the key. And so we were in their sight. Now they speaking for something they have no bearings on. How do they know how they look in their eyesight? But that's the image they had. They saw, they looked at themselves. Like that. And because they looked at themselves like that, they begin to think that that's how they was in their sight. You bless people. God got great things in store for you. That's why I'm continually telling you, 2 Corinthians 5 17, that therefore being a man, being Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away, all things have become new. And all things are of God. Irregardless to how any past you may have had or anything that may have took place in your life, God got a plan for you. Jesus shed his blood for you. He shed his blood for you. He went to the cross of Calvary for you. I tell people, a lot of people misread me and misunderstand me. Because I walk in the boldness and in the confidence. But the boldness and the confidence I walk in is not an arrogance. The boldness and the confidence I walk in is to show people. Here's a boy born and raised in turn too. Had a past. Was never looked at to make it in life. But he got a hold of Jesus. He got a hold of Jesus. He got a hold of God. And God took something that 
people may have looked at as less than you, they made something out of them. And that's all what I walk in is to demonstrate and to show people. I don't care where you've been. And don't you let nobody else make you feel less than. You hold your head up, irregardless to what you have or what you don't have. Irregardless who think you are acceptable or not. Irregardless to who accept you or not. You walk with the confidence that God loves you. And he got a plan for you. And the plan he has for you is bigger than what it may seem at the moment. But I'm just going to keep trusting God. I'm going to keep loving him. I'm going to keep doing my part. But I will not be less than. And I will not let you treat me as less than. Because if you treat me as less than, we can't walk together because I'm not less than you. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet.